Okay, so Parasite follows the Kims, who end up infiltrating a wealthy elite family under the guise of being something they're not. They're very much parasitic people, and this is hinted at early on in the movie when we're first introduced to them. Living in a basement home, we catch them in despair as they realise that the person whose Wi-Fi they'd been piggybacking off of had now put a password on it. However, they manage to pick up a signal in the bathroom, which means they can use the free Wi-Fi from a coffee shop just down the road. They are very much parasites of that Wi-Fi connection, but the similarities to a lowly life form don't stop there. We catch them folding pizza boxes, and they're very much in a symbiotic relationship with a fast food company. This company requires a lot of hands in order to do this, but they don't have the money to take on full-time members of staff. The Kims don't do the job properly, and a quarter of the boxes are unusable, but the pizza company have no other option, which the Kims somewhat play upon. Not long after, we watch workers spraying pesticide in the street, and this is commonly used to kill bugs and parasites. It blows into their basement home, and this basement home of course foreshadows some of the reveals that we get in the movie. After realising their phones have been cut off, Chung Suk asks her husband Ki Take what his plan is, but we never really get an answer. Later on in the film, Ki Take reveals that it's better not to have a plan, as plans always go wrong, and if you don't have one, then nothing bad can happen. This somewhat juxtaposes the end of the film, in which his son Ki Woo says he's making a plan to go to university, become successful, and then buy the house so that his father can finally come out of the basement. I've seen a lot of back and forth over the film, namely whether this ending is something that happens, and we'll discuss why it's pretty bad news for the family later on in the video. Now with the success of Squid Game, I thought I'd revisit some Korean classics that really show why the country is currently leading the way when it comes to TV shows and movies. They just seem to be adept at creating outstanding original stories that are layered with social commentary, and Parasite is no different. The Oscar winning film is filled with hidden details, things you missed, and a lot of clues that hint towards the eventual reveals that I want to break down in this video. If you enjoy it, we'd massively appreciate you showing some respect, and also don't forget to subscribe as we do breakdowns like this each and every day. Now the movie is directed by Bong Joon Ho, who actually got the idea for the film because he worked as a tutor before he started making movies. Bong Joon Ho was actually recommended for this job by his girlfriend, and he said that he used to imagine getting all his friends jobs within the household. Bong Joon Ho very much said that being staffed like this is the only way that people on the opposite side of the class system would ever actually meet, and throughout the film there's lip service paid to how people shouldn't cross the line. The idea of recommendations is fine within the household to a point, but it asks the bigger question of what happens when this model is used in more high profile jobs. The director stated that if a politician gets a family member or a friend or a job in a high position, then they probably aren't qualified for it, and we end up with a society where our leaders aren't able to do the jobs that they're appointed to. It holds a lot of meaning to it, and again asks the question, should people cross the line? Now the conversations about crossing the line often come from the wealthy family's father Nathan Park, who constantly remarks throughout the movie that he likes people who don't do it. Lines are actually used throughout the film, and if you look at the window edges here, you'll notice that it creates a line between the two characters that we see on screen. On one side is the housekeeper, whilst the other is the wealthy wife of Nathan, and the former crosses the line in order to clap and wake the other one up. It's very subtle, and moments like this are placed throughout the movie, in which lines and camera movements are used to show when characters cross from one side to the other. Nathan actually says that he doesn't mind if the driver has sex in his car, what he's angry about is him crossing the line into the back seat. This is of course a metaphor for the social and class system within the country, and it's very deeply layered. Now Park's company is actually called Another Brick, and this is a nod to the song Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. This shows how he views his staff as all being just another brick in the wall. Walls are designed to not fall down if one brick is removed, and therefore he just views people as expendable. Whenever he's talking about his staff, we never see him saying anything positive, and when discussing the first housekeeper, he states that she always used to eat enough for two. This hints towards the reveal at the midpoint of the film, in which we find out that her husband actually lived in the secret basement in the home's bunker, and that she'd sneak him meals. When Nathan is introduced, we can see the lights turning on as he walks up the stairs, and as he gets to the top of them, they then turn off. This is revealed as being carried out by Jun Sei, who lives in the basement and operates them as a sign of respect. Now Kiwu gets the job after his friend, who works as a tutor for the parks, says that he's going to be studying abroad. Again, Kiwu is parasitic in nature, as he only latches onto the family because he uses someone else who passes him onto them. Kiwu's friend presents the Kims with a mystical rock that is said to bring wealth to the family, 
and it's clear that they believe it has somewhat of a power in it. However, later on when the Kim's home floods, we find the rock floating, which indicates that it's hollow. Not only does this explain why Kiwu is able to survive the blow to the head, but it also hints to us the hollow promises that the rock carries with it. Upon making it to the house, Kiwu slowly brings his family across as they oust the current staff so that they can take their place. The movie is filled with staircase imagery, and Bong Joon-ho stated that he put so many in the movie as they represent people travelling upwards through the class system. Stairs are pretty much featured in almost every scene in the film, and it hammers home the idea that there's a divide between the upper and lower class people. One of the most heartbreaking moments comes at the midsection when the family have to return home to their flooded house, and we watch as they wander down the stairs after living the high life whilst the parks were away. Kite grabs his wife's silver medal, and silver is of course second place, which gives a nod to how they're very much second class citizens. Something that you might not have noticed is that the table within the park's home also looks like a staircase itself, and we watch as it ascends from the bottom to the top. When Kiwu first goes to the house, we can see that there are eight chairs at the dining table. Later on, after the housekeeper and her husband are locked in the basement, there are two added, and this represents the ten people making up the three families in the home. The house is absolutely incredible, and we learn that it was designed by a man named Nam Goong. This is actually a nod to the character Nam Goong from Snowpiercer, another of Bong Joon Ho's work. Nam Goong designed the train in the film, and he was played by Song Kang Ho, who also plays Ki Take in this movie. Also, apologies for the pronunciation in this video. I know these aren't exactly how the names are said, and I'm not doing the English speakers a favour right now by butchering them so badly, but I promise I'm trying, I'm just a terrible, terrible YouTuber. Now at one point in the film, the daughter of the Parks to High talks about how her brother De Song is faking the way he acts so that his mother views him in a positive light. This is brushed aside by Ki Woo, who is of course doing the exact same thing. He even instructs her to use the word pretend twice in her English exam, and this happens at a point in which both he and his sister are pretending to be people they're not. As for his sister, it's through her we learn of De Song's trauma, namely how he saw a ghost when he was younger. He was eating birthday cake when a strange man appeared in the house, and this triggered a seizure. At the end of the film, we watch his birthday party once more, in which the man returns, and this earlier scene sets up why things happen the way that they do. Hilariously, her mother Chung Suk says that she'd be a great con artist if she wanted to be, but she very much is in this movie, it's just clear they don't see themselves as doing anything illegal. Now the parks are played as the innocents in the film, but they have their own prejudices and snobbery that sort of shows how they view the lower class people. Nathan can't stand the smell of the poor, and he remarks that Mr. Kim has an odour that's just like the underground. This has its own subtext too, as the underground is of course something that's beneath the surface, and one must travel down some stairs in order to get there. Mrs. Park also isn't that innocent either, and though she says she will pay Kiwu more than they agreed to after his first session, you can actually catch her skimming off the top and taking away some of the cash that she was initially going to give him. I believe that this was actually the salary that she paid Kiwu's friend, but she realised that she could get away with paying him less, so just decided to take it out. After they return home from the camping trip, she asks for ramdan to be made, which is a combination of two meals typically loved by kids. The meal is popular amongst the poor and rich, but Mrs. Park can't have her son eating what she views as commoner food, so she has sirloin steak added to it in order to ramp it up. Now, Kitake has some of my favourite scenes in the film, and a lot of them are laced with subtext. He becomes the family driver, and the relationship that he has with the Parks is very symbolic. There is sort of a barrier between the front and back seat of the car, and he is pretty much driving and doing all of the work whilst they relax in the back. There's even a point where Mrs. Park is sat putting her feet up whilst Kitake drives the car, and she chats away to her friends whilst he has to sit in silence. It's very much painting out the metaphor that the ones doing the work are silenced, and they have to put all the effort into things, whilst the wealthy elite can just relax and put their feet up. They are very much living a completely different life to the poor, and not subjected to the same issues that they are. Mrs. Park at one point says that the rain was a blessing, as it meant that they could return home from their camping trip. However, it completely devastates the Kim household, and means that they have to sleep in a gym along with the rest of the poor. There are some amazing accompanying shots, such as the housekeeper vomiting in the basement toilet, whilst the sewage vomits out of the toilet at the Kim's. Mrs. Park also chooses clothes from her vast and expansive wardrobe, whilst the poor have to fight over them in a gym after their homes are devastated. We also catch Kiwu texting the next day, and his hand has an imprint on it due to holding the rock through the night. 
Now this reveal at the midpoint of the movie is pretty breakneck and the entire feeling of the film shifts after the doorbell rings. This actually happens at the exact midpoint of the film and it was also exactly in the middle of the script. We see the cut security camera and this also happens in the scene that comes at the midpoint of the movie. However, it also sets up the ending as it explains how Kitek is able to escape into the house without being caught. He very much takes the position of Junsei, who is one of my favourite characters for all the wrong reasons. We learn that he's in hiding because he's in so much debt due to his company Taiwanese Castella. In the movie, there's a line about how Kitek was a driver for them and there is potential that he was somewhat instrumental in his downfall. Either way, it's such a creepy portrayal and we learn that he's been sending messages through Morse code, which Kitek also does at the end of the movie in order to relay something to his son. Now the tragedy is that these families could work together and live this life comfortably for a long time. However, the Kims are very much people that will climb to the top of the stairs and kick other people down, so the entire thing is blown open when Junsei escapes. He has spent years in the basement and upon exiting it, we can see that his pupils are massively dilated. He comes out, stabs ki -young, and then Chung Suk stabs him in retaliation. However, when it's clear that Nathan doesn't care about their daughter or her death, plus the, the wincing at his smell that triggers him, Kitek stabs him too. He then retreats into the basement and we learn that he's lying low there indefinitely. His son is arrested and along with his mother they're found guilty of fraud. Kiwu goes to look at the house and this shot is actually a reference to a painting by Peter Doig called The Architect's Home in the Ravine. Kiwu makes a plan to become rich so that he can buy the home and finally embraces his father as he leaves the basement. Just before this he puts the rock in some water and it doesn't float showing that this is indeed a fantasy. His plan is to work hard and get rich after going to uni which if you're over the age of 30 then you know that's probably not as easy as it sounds. Now whilst people have gone back and forth over whether the scene will come true or not, unfortunately if you stay for the credits then you'll know that it probably won't happen. The song that plays over them is actually sung by Choi Woo Shik, who plays Kiwoo in the movie. In it, he pretty much sings the tale of what happens after the film, namely how he gets a job doing backbreaking manual labour. He says that it would take over 500 years to earn enough money to buy the house, but it is quite upbeat and he thinks that he will do it. Whether it happens or not, we, we don't know, but it ends this amazing film and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video then don't forget to subscribe and I hope you click the thumbs up too. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of all the hidden details in Squid Game which will be linked on screen right now. It's one of the best videos we've ever made so definitely go and watch it if you enjoyed this. If not then thank you for checking this one out and sitting to the end. I hope you have a good week and you take care of yourself. I've been Paul, you've been the best and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.